Hi, Woody. How are you? <laughs> My friend all said that the sun would come up this morning. They're wrong. Can't see the sun. <laughs> <laughs> At least not yet. Um, what if Denver won that game last night? What would we be talking about? Uh, that uh, the Chiefs weren't and Pat Mahomes wasn't as good as advertised and that uh, there was a wide open AFC West and the Broncos were back. I mean, if Case Keenum makes that connection with Demarius Thomas, then we're talking about oh. we're talking about that today, right? That was horrendous. He was wide open to the touchdown. They would have won. And as a result, instead, uh, people today are talking about a uh, clock that ran out clock ran out on the Chiefs, but time ran out on the Broncos. Uh, it's just a continuation of uh, what's been going on here since Super Bowl 50, that the Broncos have fallen from grace with the sea, and uh, it's a difficult situation. And people are in mourning, uh, not for the Broncos and the Rockies, but they're in mourning for Fritzy because it ruined his life <laughs> last night. <laughs> Have, have the Broncos found their quarterback, though? Do you think Case Keenum is is the quarterback? In retrospect, uh, they should have gone after one of those young quarterbacks, and that was the opportunity, and that's what John Elway debated. And privately, he really wanted to get a young quarterback. Uh, he wasn't as interested in Kirk Cousins as people believed, but felt like he had to act on a veteran quarterback because it worked so well, as you know, with Peyton Manning. Now, Case Keenum never will be Peyton Manning, but they felt like they were close enough that if they got a veteran quarterback who had a great year last year with the Vikings, that it would it would make a significant difference. And really, Case Keenum had played a good game so far in the first four. Uh, they're lucky, actually, uh, given everything, that they're two and two at this point. They could have lost to the Raiders. Uh, and they were behind in, in the opening game to the Seahawks in the fourth quarter. So uh, I guess that if you were to go back and you, you now look at the production of the, of the four quarterbacks that were there, Baker Mayfield was they, – they, they saw him play like 15 different times, <laughs> and they coached him in, in the Senior Bowl, and they really wanted, wanted him, but I think there was fear about a six-foot quarterback and – whether he was another Johnny Manziel, and they ended up getting a six-foot quarterback in, in Case, <laughs> Case Keenum. Keenum. Yeah. Uh, the uh, first glance in person, I'm guessing, at uh, Patrick Mahomes, what did you think? I haven't seen anybody throw a wobbly left-handed pass since Tim Tebow <laughs> left here. <laughs> but – uh, he's he's as advertised. Uh, I'd seen him play two earlier times on TV, but see him in person. He's very mature, and I think he has all the ingredients. Uh, to me, with the talent he's surrounded by, the Broncos did their best to put pressure on him, and they didn't lay glove on him all night. So I I think that you know, the the debate continues between Mahomes and and now Trubisky is entered into the conversation in regard to, you know, who's the best of the younger quarterbacks because one been here for a while. But I, I think um, Holmes is, was worth what Kansas City did last year to get it. And this is a quarterback. A guy was telling me uh, on the elevator yesterday, he said, Lenny Dawson. And I looked at him. That's all he said to me, Lenny Dawson. And I said, what do you mean? He said, that's the last time we've had a quarterback. And I said, Sid Luckman. And he said, Oh, who is Sid Luck? But yeah. that's last time the Chicago Bears had a quarterback. <laughs> Lenny Daw, yeah. I'm trying to think who else Kansas City had. Well, Alex Smith, I think, was a better than average quarterback. Um, I just well, he was talking about somebody they developed from the very beginning. Oh, cause, okay. You know, as you remember, Joe Montana had a nice run there during. I remember him beating John Elway in a Monday night game here. So they had Montana for a while, but other than that. They've had such a string. They're like Cleveland Browns. They had uh, they had not had a uh, drafted quarterback for like twenty something years, I think. So that's what they're talking about. That they the last time they had a quarterback was uh, in, in Dawson that took them to the Super Bowl. He's Woody Page, star of Around the Horn, a Denver columnist joining us, Dan Patrick Show. I'm curious if you've ever done this, Woody. I, I asked Dan Shaughnessy about this. If you've ever published 
columns that you wrote during a game and then all of a sudden you had like a different ending but what you would have written what you were writing at the time if you if you release that column what would it have said have you ever gone back and looked at that where all of a sudden you go i gotta change the entire column that i just wrote oh i i would guess probably 30 times during the nba playoffs world series but i'll tell you the best and the worst was uh, the dodgers played in in denver no 1995 97 something like that and the game was delayed because of rain and didn't start till about 8:30 and i wrote a column saying the dodgers were not were not any good terrible team not good pitching just had no chance of winning the world series and i wrote that in about the 6th inning uh, a guy named nomo was pitching a no hitter and somebody said well maybe you need to rethink that column and i said well there's no way anybody's ever going to pitch a no hitter in Denver, Colorado. It just won't happen. All the games were 16 to 14. And he went on to throw a no-hitter. And so I was rewriting the column, and I called the newspaper, and I said, well, I got a new column on the no-hitter. And they said, uh, our deadline's passed. The, the papers are being printed. And it was the only time in my life that I prayed for a blizzard of the century. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got so many responses. That was really <laughs> in the birth of the Internet but I got so many phone calls that jammed the, the system in Denver <laughs> and uh, saying, you know, at least you could have said that uh, even though the pitching's bad for the Dodgers, uh, no more pitch to no hitter last night. <laughs> so, yes, it, it is it is uh, a rare, but it's one of those times when you want to get the car and go around and try and pick up every newspaper <laughs> in Denver. Uh, how yeah. do you – how do you feel about the Rock? Has the Rockies mindset, because it used to be that slugfest softball like scores there. Uh, why don't we, why don't we have that uh, flow of offense like we once had in Colorado? Well, the humidor really changed. Uh, I think not only Denver, but uh, I know the Diamondbacks have, have installed a humidor because of. Uh, They're the second kind of highest money. elevation, right? And, and nobody talks yeah. about the Arizona Diamondbacks and their stats, but we always talk about the Rockies. Well, uh, as they ever as they, uh, use that word again, but uh, at the start of the fourth quarter last night, the, the Broncos have a, uh, a video they play about uh, showing Aspen and the mountains and one mile above sea level, and there's no other team in, in football that has that. And there was a great moment where, they then show one of the Kansas City Chiefs on the sideline uh, sucking up oxygen. And because of the altitude, and I've talked to a number of former Major League pitchers, it, it, it's not so much uh, the height, but the lack of humidity here, Dan. And you can't get a good grip on the ball. And obviously in thin air, and it's been proven scientifically, I know that doesn't, doesn't ring true with uh, a lot of people in government, but the altitude does – and the climate here does change uh, the flight of the ball. And so guys who can break off a great curveball at sea level can't do it at, at altitude, and so everything comes in flat. And uh, as I said, one, one of the pitchers told me, you never can get a good feel on the baseball because it's so dry. And the humidor kind of changed that. But I think what changed it more is that, uh, and I'll give you a private example, Kyle Freeland should be in the – Cy Young conversation, and nobody really talked to him, talked about him till late, and he's won 17 games. Cal Freeland grew up in altitude, and maybe their mistake has been not drafting pitchers <laughs> who grew up in Colorado or in other nearby states because he didn't care. I mean, he's told me he doesn't care about the altitude. He said it's always been this way, but they have drafted and and signed as undrafted free agents from Latino countries. Uh, pitchers who don't a care about the attitude altitude or the attitude here, and they also uh, <laughs> for the first time, rather than getting washed up pitchers from other clubs, because as you well know, m most veteran pitchers want no part of pitching in Colorado, either as a visiting team or certainly not as the home team. And so I think the mindset changed, the philosophy changed when they started just drafting pitcher after pitcher who they thought could pitch, keep the ball down at altitude. 
Uh, have you ever come close to wanting to punch somebody on Around the Horn? Even though uh, you're not together, but if, if you were together, who, who would have got popped? Oh, Jay Mariotti. <laughs> <laughs> and it was not for anything he said, but uh, <laughs> I don't know whether I can say this on the radio, but it's the, the funny story behind the scenes story at the Round the Horn was I always called him Richard. And he would call ESPN executives every day. Every day he'd call them. And, he, and Jim Cohen, who is now with the NFL Network, uh, was a good friend of mine. He's the vice president. And he finally called me and he said, uh, Jay Mariotti complains that you can't get his name right. You ca- keep calling him Richard. And I said, well, I can't call him Dick. <laughs> so I, <laughs> I swear that's a true story. And he said, is that why you do that? And I said, of course it is. That's- so he said, you can't do that anymore. Oh. So ESPN ruled that I couldn't call him Richard anymore. <laughs> so the next day I called him Jim. And Jim Cohen called me. He said, why are you <laughs> calling Mariotti Jim now? And I said, because you're a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Reality gives you some bonus points for this, Woody. No, he 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 doesn't like my uh, – Old time references. Yesterday, <laughs> I said that uh, our world, our uh, Ryder Cup team was so bad, but then we haven't won anything in France since the year before I was born. And reality said, "What happened then?" And I said, "World War Two." <laughs> <laughs> you won this he show. Put, yeah, he you, just puts up with me. Yeah, I wrote yeah. yesterday. It was a big day in Denver. Uh, the Rockies and the Broncos needed to win because I'd already won. And some guy wrote me and said, what'd you win? <laughs> he was right. <laughs> what did I really win? Uh, <laughs> so, good to visit I, I with remember, you. I remember, I've got I to gotta intercept, gotta intercept you here. Uh, in Detroit, I had a Super Bowl years, 15, 20 years ago. I was walking through uh, the conference center, though, Chevrolet Conference Center. And I heard someone say my name. And I turned, and it was you, and you were on the air. And you said, welcome to the dark side. So thank you for that. <laughs> and and you haven't left. You've you've uh, you've made it your home, Woody. Woody, Woody um, hey, great to talk to you again, and uh, have fun with the Rockies and uh, the Cubs. Thank you. Yeah, and take care, Fritzy, today. All right, we will. We will. Thank you, Woody. Uh, Woody Page around the horn. I like when somebody says, "I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on the radio," and then that's when you go, "I'm not going to say a word here." That's funny. That's a funny uh, Jay Mariotti story. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.